Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas, is a Medicare-certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. I would recommend Angel Care to anybody. They have really helped me regain my strength. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. Angels Care Home Health. We serve patients. I couldn't have survived this without Angels Care. Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for joining us and thanks as always to our producer, Jeff Durall. We're at the K-State Ag Research Center with the department head, Dr. Bob Gillen, as we talk about the fall outlook and also the news of an introductory new variety of wheat. As we talk with uh, Dr. Bob about this new wheat variety, let's start with the name. I love the name you came mm -hmm. up with this, Bob. Yeah, this is a new wheat, or new white wheat we've just released, Mike, and we, we called it uh, Joe in honor of Joe Martin, who was the, the wheat breeder here for uh, almost 30 years. I was going to say practically forever, I that, think. That's right. You're <laughs> darn right. So when was this uh, introduced, Bob? Well, we just had the official release of it in August of this year. We have some procedures we have to go through at the university to, uh, you know, in terms of all the testing and then we get approvals and so forth. So it's been put out as a, a public variety, uh, like I said, just about a month ago, two months ago. And simply called Joe. That's right. Very short and sweet. <laughs> easy, easy to remember. And no numbers, no uh, letters or anything <laughs> preceding or following, right? That's, that's right. Tell me about uh, the uh, the wheat variety itself and some of the characteristics, Bob. Sure. Now, this is a white wheat, uh, Mike, which we've worked on extensively here. I mean, really, Joe started our, our white wheat breeding program here back in the 80s. And uh, it's interesting that the first cross, the first male and female parent that eventually turned into Joe was made in 2005. So Joe Martin actually made this cross and it's carried on through. Joe retired a few years ago, but the new wheat breeder has carried the evaluation on through and, and so uh, has been able to release it. Now, in its background, it has a couple of uh, wheat varieties that uh, producers will really recognize. One is uh, uh, Danby, uh, which is a, a really common white wheat that we have. And then the second is Jagger, which was one of the most popular wheat varieties ever produced in Kansas. So that's actually one of the parents of Joe. And this was kind of a transition from the hard red that uh, had been bred and reduced and introduced and used uh, at the Ag Center for years, hasn't it? Certainly. You know, still the red wheat is still the, by far the dominant wheat type of wheat produced in western Kansas, but uh, the white wheat is continuing to grow slowly. Uh, you can get a premium for white wheat if you can market it directly to the millers. Uh, the interesting about it thing about it is that you can have whole grain bread that still has a white color and a finer mm -hmm. texture than, say, the than the, what we think of the whole grain bread, you know, in terms of the browner texture and a little heavier. So those are some of the advantages of white wheat, but it's still growing slowly. Has uh, is this designed for the bakers for that uh, kind of a commercial market, Bob? Right. Uh, you know, the the millers and bakers uh, actually like white wheat. Uh, certainly, I mean, they've used red wheat for decades. That's again been the dominant wheat produced, but they. They do like white wheat. It actually produces a little more flour per pound of grain when they mill it out, which is an advantage. And then again, it just has some, kind of has some flavor and texture advantages also. Tell us if you would, Bob, as a scientist yourself, about the procedure, the approach to working on a new variety like this. Uh, mm -hmm. what's, uh, what's the thinking that goes into those things that Joe was doing and uh, the uh, the ultimate goal? Sure. Well, it's, it's I, I usually try to, say it's somewhat similar to if you're breeding animals you know you you have you take a couple of parents you have a, a wheat here that maybe has some desirable characteristics maybe it has some particular disease resistance mm -hmm. or stress resistance and then you take a so maybe that's going to be your male parent and then you take a female parent that maybe has some complementary uh, characteristics maybe it has disease resistance for a couple of different things mm -hmm. and the idea is you're trying to get those those disease resistances or those good genes, so to speak, into your new one. So you cross those, produce the seed from that cross, plant that out again, and, and it, it takes a while for it to actually kind of breed true, so to speak. And so you have to, to back cross it, like, or not back cross it, I'm sorry. 
you have to continue to evaluate it and, and uh, winnow it down, so to speak, for about four to five years before we actually start taking it out to the field for, for yield tests. And then we do yield tests across all of western Kansas, Oklahoma, Colorado, Nebraska for a couple of years. Again, we want to be sure that anything that we release, Mike, you know, has stable production characteristics and, and that we can say with confidence that it's better than what's out there right now. I mean, any new wheat that we release needs to be better than what's already out there or else there wouldn't be any particular reason to release it. So we, we go to great lengths to, to test and retest and retest to make sure that it is going to be an improvement over what, what we have available right now. And this is not a short-term process. This takes uh, years and years of development, doesn't it? It does. It takes about 10 years mm -hmm. from the first cross until we feel confident enough that we can release a new wheat. And, and again, the first cross for Joe was in 2005. We're releasing it in 2015, so it's about mm -hmm. on, on the average. Now, <clears throat> we've got new genetic character. Uh, not characteristics, new genetic techniques that are coming along all the time. The mm -hmm. breeders are using to try to shorten down that period so that mm -hmm. maybe we can get a variety out maybe in six or seven or eight years versus the 10, 11, or 12 years mm -hmm. that it takes now. And they're making quite a bit of progress on that and, and they're starting to incorporate those new techniques, techniques into our program right now. Well now Bob, you mentioned a couple of things I wanted to ask you about uh, the new variety of Joe. Uh, that would be drought tolerance and mm -hmm. insect resistance. Uh, tell us mm -hmm. about that as it relates to the new yeah. variety. Not so much insect resistance, but actually disease. The three biggest diseases that we have a problem with in western Kansas are wheat streak, mosaic virus, stripe rust, and stem, uh, not stem rust, leaf rust, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. And this, on a scale of one to 10, Joe has a resistance of two for all three of those, one being the highest, 10 being the lowest, it has a two for all three of those. And those are our three most prominent diseases in Western Kansas. So we feel like this wheat will be very well adapted to our situation. And then in terms of just overall yield, obviously that's one of the reasons we put these out. And over the last three years in our test throughout Western Kansas and, and even throughout the Great Plains, it has been at the top uh, in those tests for the last several years. Last year, 2015, it was 5% better over about eight locations in Western Kansas. It was 5% better in yield than, than any other wheat that's out there right now. That translates to more bushels and more uh, profit for the producer, doesn't it? That's what we're striving for all the time. Wow, that's mm -hmm. an amazing uh, disease resistance that uh, was built into this new variety. Right. So um, what's Bob Gillen's story? Uh, what uh, kind of interest in agriculture led you down mm -hmm. the path of uh, research and scientific exploration, yeah. Bob? Well, I actually grew up down in southwest Kansas in a town called Mead. Uh, I was always interested in uh, natural resources and those kind of things and, and got interested in, in rangeland management and the, uh, the management of our native grasslands here in Kansas uh, in, in high school, I guess. And so I uh, went out to Colorado to school. I was actually gonna study forestry and I realized, well, grasslands are just as interesting as, as forests, if not more so. And, and so I went on to school and became what we call a rangeland scientist. It's my specialty is, is native grasslands, the, how we graze those, whether we use fire or not, mm -hmm. how they react to drought, those kind of things. And uh, worked in Oklahoma for about 20 years and then came here to Hayes uh, about nine years ago and have enjoyed every minute of it. Mike. Well, one of the big rangeland grass specialists that I remember, Dr. Gerald Tomanic at Fort Hay State. You and Jerry ever cross paths? You know, I've, I visited with him uh, a couple of times. Was was lucky enough to meet him, and I've certainly read and studied and and used all the, the publications that he. Uh, yeah, he's one of the one of the. Uh, well, he's most a premier, isn't he? One most prominent grassland yeah. ecologist, you bet. Mm -hmm. And widely respected, I think, in his publications. Oh, absolutely. Did. Oh, yeah. So um, the uh, Ag Center now, uh, what's going on uh, in future projects here, Bob? Well, uh, lots of things, certainly. Uh, we, you know, our wheat breeding, our wheat breeding and sorghum breeding, those are things that just are always churning. I mean, you've always got to keep going. You can't really start and stop those once you because we, once we get this pipeline filled, then we've always got you know, new stuff coming out. Uh, Dr. Phil Stallman is working, uh, continuing to work really hard on uh, the herbicide resistance issue with weeds, that, a couple of weeds we have that are becoming, or have become re resistant to glyphosate and some of our mm -hmm. other herbicides. 
Phil's actually in India right now giving a talk. He was invited to come over there and speak at a conference on how weeds develop uh, resistance to herbicides. So uh, we've got international uh, reach here a lot yeah. of times, Mike. Yeah, and Phil, that's not the first trip Phil's made uh, across uh, uh, the world either, is it? No, he's been invited to Australia many times yeah. and uh, Korea and, and other places too. Amazing. Sure. Uh, Augustine Obor, our uh, soil scientist here, is starting to work uh, a lot of projects on cover crops, which have really garnered a lot of interest over the last 10 to 15 years in terms of uh, how we might be able to integrate cover crops into our overall cropping systems here in western Kansas with some, maybe some, hopefully, some positive impacts on soil health. Where does that work? Where it doesn't in terms of moisture use? Those are some of the things he's, he's working on. Uh, we just restarted our millet breeding program here. Uh, pearl millet is a, a forage, uh, annual forage and, and also some for grain. That We had a program here in the past and it, it went dormant, but uh, we're actually restarting that because we think as we continue to have more drought stresses, uh, higher temperatures, uh, we may be able to, we may need to have another bullet in our gun in terms of, uh, or another tool in the toolbox of what farmers might be able to utilize for in their cropping systems. And boy, mm -hmm. this, this fall, uh, well this summer, even spring, has seen some really dry conditions that are going to respond to new research here at the Ang Center. Well, we hope so, certainly. Yeah, Hayes has been, uh, we're kind of in a hole in Ellis County. Uh, you know, some of the parts of western Kansas haven't been all that bad this summer, but mm -hmm. we've actually only had uh, 14 inches of rain this year and up mm -hmm. to date and, and we should be you know closer to 20 by now. Yeah I remember from Joe Becker of course weather observer here at the Ag Center. Uh, right. Um, I think August was less than half an inch and September came in the same way I think. <clears throat> yeah if we just really want to commiserate about it we've, we've had less than one inch of rain since August the 1st. Oh wow. And uh, and if you remember, we had eight consecutive days of 100 degrees mm -hmm. the first week in September. So mm -hmm. that really sapped out our, our uh, grain sorghum crop. I mean, it really made it mature early and uh, so forth. And then, like us and, and many, many other farmers around, we're really struggling with uh, trying to get wheat planted in these very dry conditions. And that's why this dry land farming at the Ag Center is so important on the research, Bob. Mm -hmm. All right, we got a couple of minutes left. Our backdrop here has quite a story itself. Well, it does, Mike. Uh, you know, Bill Dutzman, who's uh, one of the legendary superintendents here at the station, uh, commissioned that statue by Pete Felton in 1976 to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the of the Ag Research Center. So they brought in a solid block of limestone, mounted it there on on the brick pedestal, and then Pete Felton actually sculpted that bull right right in place there. So that, that's kind of an interesting thing. I got to hear the story of how Felton was able to get up on top of that thing to be able to do that kind of finished work. That is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, well, and you know, that was uh, quite some time ago now, so uh, he was a younger man then. I suppose maybe that's the key right there. <laughs> Dr. Bob Gillen, uh, the uh, department head at the K-State Ag Research Center in Hayes. Ongoing research, and you'll hear about it as a community connection. Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas, is a Medicare certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. There's not any words to describe their kindness. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. Angels Care Home Health, we serve patients. They saved my life.